80,000 miles per hour. It hurts. In the Falkland Islands, we have this really interesting system where you've got islands that um, have no native mammals. Um, they're home to some of the most important uh, penguin and other seabird colonies in the world. And there's also, they're also home to a lot of people that, have their, that make their livelihoods through fisheries, tourism, and also sheep farming. So people, the settlers, brought sheep to those islands um, in, the, in the 1800s. So I am researching the history of the island over the last 11,000 years. And I'm looking at how the plants and animals have been influenced by a changing climate. And how and what we learn from that uh, from the past can tell us a little bit about how things might change in the future to better prepare people um, there. We want to know the difference between tussock grass charcoal and say wood charcoal, right? And why there are no native trees in the Falkland Islands, and so if there was wood burning, then it's a good indicator that humans were probably there. I'm interested in a species of fox that was only found in the Falkland Islands. Um, and has since been hunted to extinction. Um, so basically when Europeans arrived in the Falklands, there was this species of fox there um, called the wara, uh, but there were no humans there and no other land mammals, um, which really for me kind of raised the question of why is the wara there and how did it get there? Um, so that's one of the things I'm, I'm really interested in figuring out is, is how this fox got to these isolated oceanic islands. In the Falkland Islands, there's a, a, a really unique plant called tussock grass and it grows really tall and it forms peat and it's also a really important habitat for lots of seabirds and marine mammals. It towers over your head when you get in these little tunnels in the tussock and you might turn a corner and see a sea lion there or some penguins waddling along. And you quickly understand how important this grass is because the wind is extremely ferocious there in the Falklands. So there's this nice symbiosis, right, where the grasses provide the habitat and they get the benefit of the nutrients. And so then, of course, you bring in the human side of things and humans are, um, you know, bringing these sheep to the islands, the sheep are eating the grasses uh, and causing disturbances in the, in the grasses. And so that has effects then on the penguins. But you can't, you can't just say, well, let's build a fence and keep the sheep out because this is people's livelihoods. And yet the tussock grass is really important to hold down the actual land. So it's preventing erosion from happening. And with an increase in extreme weather events, it's like storms and, and increasing erosion, um, having this fringe of tussock grass on, on the uh, landscape is, is really important. Uh, and it, it could encourage people to uh, conserve or preserve uh, the tussock grass and, and improve like, some of the restoration habits. Understanding uh, how that introduction of a fox could impact the, the seabirds that are bringing nutrients from um, the marine environment under the terrestrial environment and then in turn how that affects plants is, is really important I think to understand those linkages. Conserving this habitat is really important for the seabirds. Uh, there are thousands and thousands of tourists that come there each year to, to see the really unique wildlife that's there. In regards to specifically what I'm studying, I think um, one of the, the big take-homes for this will be that we'll have a better understanding of how ecosystems respond to um, introduce species and, and to um, extinctions. And so I think having an understanding of, of how ecosystems have responded in the past to both introductions um, and extinctions is really important uh, in order to kind of plan for or understand what we might see in different environments. <laughs>